You can never reciprocate that hunger. Once you have a lot of success, you know, it's almost like you're made men, you know? And it'll happen with Phoenix. It's happening with Atlanta. Last year, it happened with Miami. Another thing that has taken place since we last spoke is the Atlanta Hawks struggles continue. This is through nine games, and it's not like they're behind the eight ball, but they're four and five to start off the season, and they looked so good that first night against Dallas. We didn't really know what to make of it. A lot of it was criticisms of Jason Kidd, but then, you know, their losses are to Cleveland, to Washington, to Philadelphia, and to Brooklyn. Those were all on the road, and then last night, they get pasted by Utah on their home floor. So that was their first home loss. But more concerning, I think, is you had that opening night, you know, win. Your other wins are against Detroit, <clears throat> New Orleans, uh, of course, without Zion, and then the Wizards at home on Monday night. And, you know, we talked about this a lot, and I talked about this regarding the Phoenix Suns this year. And I said, it's going to be harder simply because, and there's a whole other layer to their, you know, how difficult it's going to be for them anyway. But uh, I got some, not a lot, but I did get some people recoiling at me saying about the Suns that you only get to sneak up on everybody once. And I believe that wholeheartedly, that when you have been a moribund franchise and you haven't done anything, for the longest time, and then all of a sudden you become, in their case, an Eastern Conference Finals team, well, then you come back the next year, and when people see your name on the schedule, it is treated differently than it has been in the past. And in fact, to that point, Trey Young even spoke about this regarding uh this year and he said we are no longer the hunters um yeah obviously speaking about the position that they were able to be in last year it's the regular season i'm not gonna lie it's a lot more boring than the playoffs you got to find that motivation to play like it's the playoffs uh and then he said a lot of guys are learning that uh this year he said it's tough uh trying to rally some of the teammates during early in the season because it's not like the playoffs. And that's an element of it too. When you play in those incredibly high stakes games with those atmospheres, and then you come back during the regular season and you just figure we're going to be a playoff team. Then until you do it, those regular season games matter a lot to you, right? Because you've never been there. And then once you do it, and you have success there, it can have this effect where it's like, well, this isn't as fun. Mm -hmm. But but until you get there, you're fighting to get there, you know? When you lose a game to a team that you shouldn't, it matters a lot more to a team that hasn't done anything. Like, I promise you, nobody lost any sleep on the Lakers last night. Nobody. Yeah. But for a team that's like, fighting and know there's going to be scratching and clawing to try to get in the playoffs when they lose to OKC they do lose sleep because they look back and they said that's one that we let, we let get away and wins matter so much more and so now they have gone to the hunted by virtue of their success and it hasn't started off all that well even though they have talent they have depth they've got all the pieces Trey's not going to the line I mean, I think he's been to the line 10 times in a game, um, whereas that was rather commonplace last Trey, year. Trey's down two seasons ago, 9.3 free throw attempts per game. Last season, 8.7, down to 5.6 per game so far this year. And it affects the offense. There's yeah. no question. It affects the offense because so much revolves around him. And as we've talked about, I absolutely believe that Lack of free throws does uh, hurt guys get into a rhythm that they did get into by going to the free throw line frequently. That even if you missed a couple shots, all of a sudden you get to the free throw line, you take the breather, you watch the ball go in a couple of times. Now 
they get back on rhythm. Um, and so that's an effect too. But I do think it's more of now people see Atlanta and it's not like, oh yeah, Atlanta, we can, you know, we'll win this one. Like that people don't feel that way anymore. And you know, this is this is what happens. You as I've said, you only get to sneak up on everybody once. You know, some of these teams are benefiting from it. The teams that get better, right? A lot better, especially at the beginning of the season, then they get to Cleveland, people over, you know, everybody's just chalked up wins against Cleveland for years. Cleveland will beat you now, right? Um, last year, was Charlotte, people just chalked up wins <clears throat> against Charlotte. And then Charlotte was good at the beginning of the season. And next thing you know, you've lost games at Charlotte. Um, and we'll see who this year's teams are. Cleveland's obviously one of them in the early season. But the reverse is true, too. You don't, you don't get to do that twice. Yeah. Now you're good. Yeah, I mean, Trey, Trey said it last night. We're no longer the Hunters. Yeah. Um, I, I thought one of the interesting parts in Trey's quote last night, after he said we're no longer the Hunters, he continued, it's regular season. I'm not going to lie. It's a lot more boring than the playoffs. You've got to find that motivation to play like the playoffs. I, I read uh, all the, I read yeah. this whole thing. I, I thought that was a uh, transparent and honest comment. Like it's partially – as you're saying that you're the team, everybody knows what to expect now. They get a whole year of film on you. They know not to take you lightly. You're the team that is like, you know, the hunted now. You're not the hunter. But also, the regular season is boring. You know, so like, is the team also having a hard time getting up for games, staying intense on defense um, the way they did last year, the way they defended as a whole unit? Um, the team's also had some injuries. Mm -hmm. through training camp preseason start of the regular season how much is that a factor how much is the other thing that i'm thinking about is um sometimes after a team has success the first time you know guys want the ball a little bit more mm. and, and like the atlanta has a roster full of players who can do something off the dribble in addition to being that fit that uh good fit next to trey young spot up threes three and d and all that but like you know Cam Reddish, DeAndre Hunter, Danilo Gallinari, DeLon Wright, Kevin Herter. These are uh, Bogdan Bogdanovich. These are a lot of guys that can all handle the ball in some capacity. And, you know, sometimes their offense just feels really disjointed. Their defense is not on the same level it was before. It's been below average so far this season. I believe it's bottom 10 in defensive rating after that Utah game. I think they were 18th entering that game. But, um, I don't know, dude. It's just a lot of things with Atlanta right now. It's a lot of different issues, and I'm not sure which one is an is a cause. It's probably just a combination of all of them. The, the The concern is like, how fixable is this with the current roster, Chris? Is this something where you know they get back to the level that they were with the current roster they have, or is there a need for some consolidation with the amount of talent and depth that they have and turning like three into one? That that to me is like the big solution. I'm just not sure that's there for them this season just because the trade market is so flat. There's just not a lot out there that makes sense for a team like the Hawks. But I, I lean towards that being a solution. Um, but ultimately, like, depth is still good to have. Yeah, um, and, but and the other so, thing something's that, off. Something's the, off. The other thing that is odd about them, Kev, is they stunk last year and then became awesome. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it literally yeah. Flipped mid season. Mm -hmm. And it could again this year. Could. It could. You could. You know what I mean? But yeah. they changed coaches mm -hmm. last year. And so last year, even more so than the sneaking up on people, they had the added advantage of it didn't happen for a couple of months, honestly, until they were somebody that you needed to, they, they were somebody to be trifled with. It took a while, and then, you know, people started to notice, hey, yeah. Atlanta's pretty good, but, you know, now it's a different deal with the target on your back. That's for sure, and the trade thing is a, it's a deal. You know what I mean? You, when you go from one of the most devastating scorers in the league, him and Harden are absolutely having a different time during these games. There's no question. There is an adjustment that has to take place with them that is greater than their peers, and that is because they are responsible for this. Harden, 
you know, playing for fouls, both of them playing for fouls rather than playing for buckets. Um, and Trey's big move was how many times did he come around those screens and just stop and let you run him over or start taking a shot as soon as you did come over the screen? Um, that's not a play you can do anymore. And that happened regularly, <laughs> you know, and you just yeah. go to the line, make three free throws. Yeah, it's tough. I mean, Trey, this is probably an adjustment period for Trey. He's also yeah. not shooting the three well right now. Right. Um, you know, he's, I think, 25% on the season. It's still so early. I mean, like you hit no. five more shots, it turns you into 35%. Um, but I mean, I, I'd, I'd still love to see Trey. I mean, like I just said earlier, they have so many guys that can handle the ball. I'd still love for Trey to embrace some stuff off the ball because he's a much better shooter off the catch from three than he is off the dribble. Like it's, it's like dynamite. Mm-hmm. Some of the highlights are off the dribble. He's a far more efficient shooter off the catch. I, I would just love to see Atlanta incorporate more Trey Young coming off of screens, hitting threes on the move, or just simply getting opportunities spotting up. That allows him to rest. It allows him to to get over the course of the long regular season to rest and just get more efficient looks. Maybe that helps that offense out sometimes, getting different guys into pick and roll. They have enough bodies that can do it. I just love to see that dimension of Trey's game be really unleashed this year. But so far, it, it continues to be just a lot of on ball and then a lot of stationary, you know, standing yeah. around off ball, which I, I don't I don't feel like that and it, fully embraces what Trey can be. And you just can never you can never reciprocate that hunger. Once you have a lot of success, you know, it's almost like you're made men, you know, and It'll happen with Phoenix. It's happening with Atlanta. Last year, it happened with Miami. Miami was in the NBA Finals. They weren't any good last year, Kevin. I mean, they weren't. And then got run out in the playoffs. Um, The Lakers screwed around last season. It wasn't the same. I mean, it's just, I think you find this to be true of a lot of teams that have a tremendous amount of success, especially the ones that have a tremendous amount of success out of nowhere. And then next year. And that's why he said what he said, which is, well, this isn't, yeah, I, I didn't know the difference between the regular season and the playoffs until last year. <laughs> yeah. this is, you know what I mean? Everybody ain't screaming all the time. I don't get to bow every game to Madison square garden or whatever, right? This, this feels like a small stage. The regular Um, season's boring. He says that's something. (laughs) What an intermission. (laughs) 